Okay, what is going on everybody? How are you doing today? My name is Corey, aka Scarn, and today, today, we are talking about one of my favorite accessories that I have ever laid my hands on when it comes to gaming, and that is the Xbox Elite Controller. Now more specifically, I want to talk about both the Series 1 and the Series 2. Disclaimer, I've never used the Series 2, but based on extensive research and from personal experiences from friends I know have the controller, I wanted to compare the two and give you guys my opinion on which I think you should go with and why. But before we get into that, I did want to remind you guys that I do stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday or Friday my schedule is kind of still being fleshed out a little bit but I do try to keep you guys as updated as possible in my social media which I'll leave in the description down below so if you guys want to go follow me on those as well that would be awesome now I'm going to try to keep this video under five minutes so that we can be mindful of your guys's time so I will be trying to keep it to some of the main key points as to why spoiler alert I think the Xbox Elite Controller Series 1 is your go-to so real quick before i go over why i feel the series one is the better choice let me go over some of the key features from each controller so quickly going over these for you here i'm not going to get into anything scientific but i would like to review it very quickly on the back you'll see that on the series one you have these four paddles here the series one and series two each have these paddles although on series two they are much smaller which people do say in fairness to the series two that it is nicer to have the smaller version because it's not as easy to accidentally hit a button and moving on from the paddles you'll see that we have these interchangeable thumbsticks these are great because it gives you many different options when it comes to heights and textures especially when it comes to your aiming joystick this one is especially important because when it comes to aiming, precision is everything. And as you can see, there's different levels to heights when it comes to each one of these joysticks. My favorite is this one right here, which is the medium height rounded joystick. This one is very comfortable on my thumb. It's a decent height for my thumbs, not too high to where it's exhausting and not too low where my movements are very jerky. It's just the right height and just the right grip to where I find myself getting great aim every single time. And then moving to the middle of the controller on the Series 1, you'll see a switch with a 1 and 2, which are your different profiles. And this is just your first and second profile where you can customize different layouts when it comes to your buttons and your paddles. You will notice on the Series 2 that instead of a switch, which is a button and there's three profiles instead of two. I don't find this to be a huge deal and it's definitely not something important enough to me to where it's going to make me want to upgrade anytime soon. Another key difference on the Series 2 is that it is Bluetooth. That actually is very nice to have. I will say I wish I had it on the Series 1, especially for the premium price I paid for it at the time. Although again, I do not find it completely necessary to my gaming experience. Okay, so I got all the features out of the way when it comes to the controllers. Obviously, nothing scientific whatsoever. Just briefly wanted to go through what each one offers. As you saw, minor differences between the two, but really at the end of the day, they're not vastly different controllers. And while the Series 2 does have some nice upgrades like Bluetooth in like a smaller form factor, there are some key flaws to this upgrade. So let me get into those for you now. Starting at number one, we have drifting joysticks. Now, if you're wondering what that is, typically when you use a controller for more than a couple of years, the natural wear and tear of it means around the center of the joystick is starting to get a little bit wiggly and when it comes to your gameplay. You may find that when your thumbs aren't on the joysticks directly, your player will have some involuntary movements. Now this is very subtle, it's not always crucial to your gameplay, but it is very annoying. And when it comes to a loose joystick and drifting, it's not easily fixable just by you and a lot of times it requires a complete replacement of your controller. Now the second problem that I hear a lot of people having when it comes to the Series 2 is sticky buttons. And most of these buttons I hear are your left and right bumper and I hear the occasional X button also has a problem. Now unlike the drifting joystick, 
this can actually be very crucial to your gameplay. And also like the first problem, this is probably going to require a complete replacement of your controller, in which case there's no promises that you won't get a replacement that's exactly like your first one. And that brings me to my third and final issue with the Series 2, and that is the Bluetooth. Now, like I said, it's very nice that it has that option for Bluetooth connectivity. But the problem is that people are having problems with the connectivity. Do you know what I'm saying? So although my Series 1 doesn't have it, I wish it had it. If it did have it, then it would probably have the same problems. So I wouldn't even bother with it. Which means I would result to what I'm using now, which is just having it wired into my PC. And unlike the first problem, but like the second problem, that's crucial to your gameplay. So say you're in a big tournament, end game, about to bring home the dub, Bluetooth disconnects. I think you see my point. Fix your Bluetooth, Microsoft. What's up? So anyways, those are my three main and pretty big reasons why I am sticking to the Series 1 and why I probably won't be upgrading my controller for quite some time. Or at least until they come out with Series 3 and fix all the issues that they've had in the Series 2. Because when it comes to the Series 1, I mean it does literally everything that I needed to and that's great for me. So you're still getting basically the same controller, same functions, one less profile, it's cheaper, and it works. It's cheaper, but it works. I have literally had not a single issue with my Series 1 Xbox Elite controller. Like I said, I've had a friend who ordered the Series 2 Xbox controller day one, guys. Day one. Pulled it out of the box. We're playing COD together. He said, hey, you had the Series 1. Does yours also have a drifting issue on your joystick? It should say something that we know someone personally who has opened up this product that you've seen multiple bad reviews for and they have those same bad experiences that you see in the reviews and there's some truth to it so anyways guys i promised i'd keep this short i don't know if i did i still gotta edit it i ramble a lot i'm sorry so at the end of the day if you're considering buying the series one or the series two i would highly recommend the series one as of right now there's a lot less risk you can find it a lot cheaper than the Series 2, and it works. That's the biggest thing is that you know you can trust it when you're in a game, especially important games if you're a competitive gamer. I'm not. But if you are, then you can fully trust this controller coming through every time. But anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I know it was nothing very scientific. It's all opinion. Take it with a grain of salt if you want to. But just know if you go to the Series 2 and something goes wrong, I warned you. But seriously guys, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do stream on Twitch, I'll just say weekly because I haven't fully fleshed out my schedule. Be sure to go check that out, give it a follow, say hello, say how you doing. Don't ask for a follow for follow. Just don't. But that's it for this one guys, here is my Peter McKinnon sign off. Peace.